This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So we've gone through, haven't we, and just looked at how the investment, the financing, and the dividend decision all link together, and how then on top of that, it, we need to start to think about risk and how we manage risk. The way in which the F3 syllabus looks at managing risk is all about this world of hedge accounting. So it all of a sudden brings in the world of accounting and it's one of the only accounting areas that we go through and see within the F3 syllabus. So don't fear if you if you weren't a fan of F1 and F2 because there were too much debits and credits. Uh, there's only a small part of the syllabus, so you might get one or two questions. There will be a question on hedging. Uh, you know, all areas of the syllabus are going to be tested, aren't they? Uh, but don't fear too much about it. It is a difficult topic, okay? But there's not a huge amount of questions, which is a bonus. And also, as well, the syllabus only literally touches the surface, okay? It doesn't go into it into huge amounts of detail. All you need to have is just a fundamental understanding of, first of all, what hedging itself is. And then what hedge accounting is as well. OK, there's a, there's a distinction between the two. OK, so let's go through, first of all, uh, shall we, and have a look at what we mean by hedging. OK, uh, because what you've got is within your financial statements, there's going to be things that, that will change in value. OK, remember, that's what risk is. Risk is a variability in returns. That's an issue if you're looking at a project. Because if your returns, your sales, your costs, if they vary, uh, that introduces risk. And that therefore means that your MPV that you originally calculated may, may not be correct. Okay, Imagine if it was the level of risk was so high that it meant your positive MPV actually had a risk of converting into a negative MPV. If we can reduce that level of risk, uh, then that's beneficial, isn't it? Okay. Uh, We'll talk about whether or not we should actually do this hedging towards the end, but let's just assume we are responsible for reducing the level of risks because there's balances or future cash flows that will change in value. Okay, so it could be uh, that you have an overseas balance, a receivable or a payable. It could be that you have financial instruments, whether that's an equity instrument or a debt instrument that as well are going to change in value. So there could be a change in the share price. There could be a change in the value of the debt. Uh, again, if they change, it's going to impact your financial figures. Uh, there could be a change in future cash flow. So uh, future sales, uh, future purchases that you make, maybe in an overseas currency. Uh, it could be that you've taken out some borrowings and they have a variable rate of interest. Again, that's going to impact the, the future cash flows which could then impact the cash that you have available to pay the debt holders and the cash that's available to pay the shareholders and their dividend. Are you still with it? Yeah, it interlinks all over the place, doesn't it? Okay, but let's just think about hedging in its simplistic terms. There's going to be things within your financial statements that will change in value, or there could be things in the future that will change in value. You've got some examples up there, okay, an overseas balance, a tradable instrument, uh, variable rate borrowings or the purchase of an asset in a foreign currency. Okay, what do we do? We want to minimise the risk. We want to minimise that variability in returns. Okay, uh, and how do we go through and do that? Well, we use what is referred to as a financial instrument. Oh, yes, financial instrument from the glory days. Yeah, of what you've seen there, isn't it, in F1 and F2, uh, when we start to look there at usually a derivative financial instrument, so futures, options, and swaps, okay? Because by entering into a future, an option, a swap, or even a forward contract, what should hopefully happen is that the changes in the value of what is in your financial statements or what will be in your financial statements in the future, any changes in value there will be offset by the changes in the value that you have on your derivative financial instrument. So that if there is a gain on one side, there will be a loss on the other. If there is a loss on one side, there will be a gain on the other. And those losses and gains will therefore net off each other. But that's where we then go through and bring in the accounting aspect. Yeah, make sure you understand, you know, what hedging is. OK, trying to minimise the risk uh, and how we do it through the use of a financial instrument. 
Hedge accounting is the physical process of making sure that the gain and the loss are recognised in the same place. Okay, so that they do offset. We don't want them in different places. We don't want a gain in profit or loss and a loss in other comprehensive income because they're not offsetting each other, are they? Okay, we want to offset them in the same place, either in profit or loss or in other comprehensive income. And that's what hedge accounting is about. Okay, being able to make sure that the gains and losses are offset in the same place or in the same period. Okay, in the same place. Okay, there's a lot to think about. So let's just go through that and summarise it. I've not put this in the notes. Okay, I like to talk about it. You can draw it up if you want. Take a photo on your camera, much easier. Uh, because what you've got, the first bit is there in the middle, isn't it? Okay, we have a hedged item. It's the specific item that you have within the financial statement that you are looking to protect the value of. Whether that's its fair value, it's the value of your shares, the value of your debt at market value, or any changes in future cash flows, they will give rise to variability. If they give rise to variability, they give rise to risk. That hedged item needs to be protected, doesn't it? And the way in which we do that is via a hedging instrument. OK, uh, so what happens there? That's usually a derivative contract and that hedging instrument value will offset the changes in the value of those cash flows in the future or the fair value of the item. OK, so what you could have is let's just say you have a gain on the item. OK, you've got a gain in terms of the value of your shares. The share price has gone up, okay? Therefore, to offset that gain, you will need a loss, okay? So you need a derivative that will be a loss-making financial instrument. So those gains and losses can then be offset when we hedge account. And that hedge accounting is done via either what we'll see later as a fair value hedge or a cash flow hedge, okay? We need to make sure that the gains and losses offset in the right place and in the same period. OK, that's what hedge accounting is about. Just those two areas, how to account for the instrument, how to account for the item. Uh, the hedge risk that you've got there on, on the far right hand side is looking at the specific risk. And here we're only ever going to really concern ourselves with market risks being changes in the, the market rates of interest, your foreign currency or maybe a commodity price. If you're looking at buying a commodity in the future, now imagine you're in the airline industry. You know, you're looking there at buying fuel into the future, aren't you? So there's a risk that the price of fuel will change. So you need to hedge against that specific item, which is the future purchase of fuel, a future cash flow. So what you do is you enter into a derivative. Remember, a derivative is just essentially a bet. A bet on how you think how something will move. OK, will it go up or down? Uh, and then depending upon the outcome of your bet, you will either win or you will either lose. OK, if you win, you make a gain and that gain will offset a loss on the item. If you make a loss on the instrument, that will offset a gain on the item. OK, so there's quite a lot to think about, isn't there? So, OK, that's therefore what hedge accounting is all about. It's a specific matching process of the change in value of the instrument, the changes in fair value or changes in future cash flow within the financial statement, either in profit or loss or in comprehensive income. OK, uh, the key bit there is that the accounting is only relevant if the gains or the losses on both the instrument and item are either in different periods or different financial states, i.e. through profit or loss or other comprehensive income. OK, have you got the picture? You sure? Uh, let's have a look, shall we? Uh, a little illustration. OK, throw in some numbers, see if it works. Uh, so it says there, uh, Murphy Inc. is contracted to buy one million oranges in three months time. OK, uh, so it's a future purchase of oranges. Uh, there's concern about the value of the purchase fluctuating due to the uncertainty surrounding the weather impacting the harvest. OK, so depending upon what the weather does, if it's bad weather, there might be a, a poor harvest, in which case the price will go up. OK, uh, if the weather is, is good, OK, uh, there's a good harvest. I thought the price will go down because there's a, a surplus of oranges 
on the market. Okay, so to get rid of them all, the price will go down, won't it? Whereby if it's bad weather, there won't be as many oranges, it'll be scarce, so therefore people will be prepared to pay more. Okay. So in the future, you pay more or less for the oranges, depending upon the weather. Okay. Can you predict the weather? No. Not even a meteorologist can predict the weather. Okay. So it says then to mitigate the risk, Murphy enters into a derivative futures contract to buy one million oranges in three months' time at 0.2 million dollars. So fixing it at the current price. Okay. Currently, we paid 0.2 million for a million oranges. And we fix it to pay 0.2 million in three months. Okay. So what can happen? Let's just say there's no hedge accounting. Let's ignore hedging. It doesn't exist. Okay. Uh, so what you've got there, the purchase of the oranges, when you buy the oranges at some point in the future, that's when you recognize them, isn't there? Okay. So in the future, you'll get a gain or loss. But on the actual futures contract itself, OK, uh, it's a traded futures contract so that the, the value of the contract will go up or it will go down, won't it? And as it goes up and down, it's a derivative. So gains and losses go to profit or loss. Forget about how the gains and losses are made. If you make a gain, you make a loss, it goes to profit or loss, doesn't it? OK, well, there's clearly an accounting mismatch, isn't there? Because every period I put through the gain or loss on my future and I don't put anything in on the purchase until it actually arises and it's only then will i know whether or not i pay more or less than what the current price was today okay was it 0.2 million okay so there's an accounting mismatch we need to do something about it okay how do we go through and do that okay uh well that's where we go through there and put in a process of hedge accounting isn't it okay we need to make sure there that if we buy the oranges at some point in the future and pay more for them than the 0.2 million uh, then we've got a loss haven't we uh, on the purchase of oranges we paid more so therefore we will want to ensure that we get a gain on the futures contract okay so that that gain then offsets the loss okay uh, so we're going to have to hedge account we're going to have to make sure that the gains and losses are recognized in the correct period i.e. the same period uh, and in the same financial statements okay so that's what this process is about and what we'll have as we go through is we'll go through and look at what's referred to as a cash flow hedge and we'll also go through there as well and begin to look at a fair value hedge and that's where we go through and look at the details but let's just make sure that you're happy no you're not you're never no, no one ever is when it comes to the world of hedging okay but i will say it again yeah what you have there is when you have that future purchase of oranges, you will either pay more or less than the 0.2 million. If you pay more, you have a loss on the purchase, in which case you need to make sure you have a gain on the future. If, alternatively, the price of oranges goes down in the future and you pay less than what they were previously worth, so you pay less than the 0.2 million, you therefore have a gain on the purchase because you have bought it cheaper. Therefore, we need to make sure that we have a loss on the future and that loss on the future offsets the gain on the purchase. But there's no accounting mismatch. OK, don't worry about the numbers in terms of the gains or losses and where those numbers come from. Let's just think about what we're doing. OK, and hopefully now you're happy with that. OK, have a read of the notes as well in terms of the introduction. Uh, and then once you're happy with the idea, then we'll start to go through there and look at specifically your cash flow hedges. And also going through as well, looking at fair value hedges. And also, I think we touch upon your net investment hedges. Okay. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video where I think we go through and look at cash flow hedges.